Good morning, Taste Buds. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Rosh Hashanah is the two-day celebration of the Jewish New Year. And since I'm a chef, and more importantly, a lover of good food, I put food in my celebration. Join me today for some recipes made for celebrating here on Soflo Taste. Soflo Taste. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein and I stand before you in the Goya Kitchen here at J World in Coconut Creek. Let me be the first to wish you a good sweet year with all of my heart. I wish you that because it is a greeting for the first holiday of the Jewish High Holidays, Rosh Hashanah. And since you all know me, you know that food plays a large part in my celebration of the Jewish New Year and basically in every possible celebration. So today I thought it would be fun to whip up some very celebratory recipes befitting the celebration. So let's get cooking. The first dish I wanted to make is lamb shanks. These are beautiful lamb shanks are from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market, located in the corner of 441 in Sterling. Just go to DelawareChicken.com, call them at 954-983-6831. Tell them I sent you. They are the most wonderful people on earth. Um, and they've got great lamb shanks too. All right, so I'm searing the lamb shanks all over until they're nice and golden as they are. I seasoned them very heavily with just some salt and pepper. And now is the fun part. I love braising because I love how you can really manipulate flavors. So I'm starting with some big chunks of onion, carrot, and celery. About three cloves of garlic, just smashed, not even chopped. And then I decided to tie up some herbs with spices. So here I have rosemary and thyme. I'm gonna add some, one uh, cinnamon stick, some star anise, which is just delicious. Uh, Allspice berries, which are these big round balls of spice whole cloves and this is a cardamom pod which usually most people use ground cardamom but this is a whole cardamom pod so i'm going to basically put this inside of these herbs and tie it all together some spices might slip out they might not we'll see it doesn't matter i always find people that are lucky they find the spice and then they pull it out as they're eating because it fills your mouth with such goodness. So let's put this here and we'll just start kind of wrapping it up. Put them inside again. This is what I make my son do. Zachary, wrap up the herbs and he'll do it. That way, not a lot of herb jumps and falls into the sauce. There we go. Pull this around and just wrap it up. There we go. Put that in there. And then we're going to add some tomato paste and start cooking that out. Now I have something that you might find a little bit strange, but ever since I started making lamb shank, I've always used anchovy. Anchovy is a really delicious ingredient. A lot of people kind of forget about. I know it's found in Caesar salad, but believe it or not, when you braise meats and you add a little bit of anchovy in, it gives it that wonderful umami flavor, that, that sixth sense of flavor that hits you right here, you know, in the back of your mouth that makes your mouth water. So that's what anchovies are for. You would never even know it's there, I promise you. But if you don't want to use it, I get it. But I have it, and it's really good. Uh, the other thing I really wanted to do was to take a little bit of the peel off. And I'm going really delicately across the orange, and I'm not getting any pith. Pith is the white stuff that makes things bitter. So I'm just delicately coming down off the orange to use some rind and throw that in too. All right. Once the onions and carrots start to soften, go ahead and add some red wine. This is one bottle that I've just used. 
of red wine. Is it the best red wine in the world? No, but it's definitely not cooking wine. I don't like cooking wine. There's a ton of sodium in it. it to me, it really just kills um, whatever I'm cooking. So what I try to do is get a wine that I would drink. I could go and buy an eight to 10 to $12 bottle of wine, maybe have a couple sips and then throw the rest of the bottle in and not feel so bad. Does that make sense? So something you drink, but not like Oh my God, you know, holy moly, this is the best wine in the world kind of thing. As that reduces, we're gonna add a can of chopped tomatoes with its own juices. And let that come down a little bit. And finally, we're gonna add some stock. Now, if you have lamb stock in your house, go for it. Most people don't, it's not something we use very often, nor would I really find lamb bones to make stock out of. So we use chicken stock. It has gelatin, it's delicious. It takes on whatever flavor you give it. So to me, that works great. Once that comes to a boil, you're gonna tuck your lamb shanks into that broth. They should peek out about a quarter of the way down. So three quarters of the way up, the lamb shank is totally covered in broth. Cover it, if you have a cover to your pot, if not, just cover it with some aluminum foil. You're gonna throw it into an oven for about two and a half hours until the lamb just starts to break down beautifully but doesn't come off the bone. Come back because I have to show you how beautifully these turned out. We're gonna make many more recipes, so we'll see you after the break and I'll show you some good stuff. Come back to SoFlo Taste from the Goya Kitchen at Junior Achievement of South Florida. To SoFlo Taste. By the way, I'm here at JA World in Coconut Creek, an educational edifice for our kids that teaches them about business and the economy. Get to know them at jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. They always make us welcome. Now back to the food. All right, I think our lamb uh, shanks are ready. They're beautifully tender. So you might want to be a little careful with them, taking them out of the pan because they they can fall apart. So I like to use what's known as a fish spatula. I know this isn't fish, but that's what I use because it has the holes on the bottom and all the juices can stay on the bottom. And I just have the beautiful meat. Now, some people might want to strain out the vegetables, but I love the vegetables, so I leave them in there. It's really up to you. And I thought it would be really nice to have a little topping on these. I don't know if you know, Rosh Hashanah is really celebrating the sweetness of the new year. So a lot of times we eat some sweeter foods. So I'm going to have a little topping of some dried fruit. But first, let me spoon some gorgeous gravy onto our lamb. The gravy is usually the best part of it. It's just filled with all those beautiful spices, but it's not overwhelming because they're wrapped up in the herbs. It's just really beautifully savory. I do smell the orange rind, but it's not too powerful. So this is just some dried apricots, figs, and if you wanna throw some dried cherries or cranberries, that would also be yummy. I thought it would be interesting to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to it as well as just a tiny hint of balsamic, just to take away a bit of the sweetness of the dried fruit, just a tiny bit. And then I have some chopped up parsley for the freshness. And let's just add a pinch of salt to that. So this now becomes a savory and sweet mixture to go right over our lamb shank as a lovely presentation. So there you have it, our main dish of our meal. Look how beautiful that looks. All right, so the next dish I really was excited to make for you all today is a salad called a fatouche salad. And fatouche salad is um, Middle Eastern descent. It is usually made with ripped pita bread. 
Sometimes pita can be found just plain. Sometimes it comes with za'atar on it. Za'atar is a lovely spice with thyme and sesame. If it doesn't come with it, you can add it like we did. So we tossed some ripped up pita with olive oil, za'atar, and salt, and we just toasted it in the oven until it became really crispy, and that will become part of the salad. Let's make the vinaigrette first because it's a really interesting vinaigrette, and then we'll chop our vegetables. So the first thing you add, this is sumac, which is another Middle Eastern spice. It actually comes from a berry, a sumac berry. And it's really, um, it has a tartness to it. It's really floral, it's lovely, because there are sumac flowers as well. So you soak the sumac, which comes dried, and it becomes softer to the palate. So we're gonna start with the sumac, a little bit of some minced garlic, fresh squeezed lemon juice, if you haven't tried pomegranate molasses, now's your time. This stuff is so good. Um, it's really clean. It's just a reduction of pomegranate juice. And it has a, like a, a sweet tanginess to it that's really interesting. And then finally, I'll add a really good amount of salt because we have a lot of acidic things going on here. So you really want to balance it out with a nice amount of salt. Let's start whisking that together and then we'll add in some olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil, but not very fancy olive oil. It's really good, it's like an everyday olive oil, but it's not a fortune. Okay. So there's our vinaigrette for our fatouche. Let's jump into making the salad because it's really, it's just so much fun. So here I have some romaine, which I have cut to make it shorter. We also have some Kirby cucumbers, which are actually my favorite. I'm just gonna cut off the ends of both sides. Let me get this lamb out of my way, or out of your way, so you can see more of what I'm doing. We also have gorgeous radishes that are gonna be delicious in here as well. Now don't throw away those radish greens. If you ever watched my show on the farm, sauteed radish greens are absolutely delicious. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and use a mandolin to get perfect slices on this. So I'm gonna go a little thicker for the cucumber and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep the peel on for these I happen to love the Kirby cucumber peel once you get down further bottom let's go a little slower beautiful then we'll slice the radish just a little bit thinner so let's get nice thinner slices of radish delicious radish the fatouche salad is usually pretty simple. There's usually not a lot on it other than the torn pita and the romaine. But if you wish, like me, you can have some fun with it. We've added some fresh pomegranate, some feta. A lot of parsley is always in fatouche and a lot of dill, which is probably why I love it so much. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep most of the vinaigrette in here because we'll build the salad in the vinaigrette, but I'll put a little on the side just in case I've added just a little too much. All right, I'll put that over here. So we've got this gorgeous romaine that I've cut smaller. Cucumbers, radishes, a nice amount of dill an even more amount of parsley, pomegranates, and we'll save some for the top, the bread which really makes this a fatouche salad. So every time you go to eat it, you'll get a beautiful crispy bit of bread. And let's go ahead and mix this. Now I think this salad deserves a really good amount of dressing because of all the crunchiness it has. But wait till you see how gorgeous this is once it hits the plate. It has so much vibrancy. 
Actually, you know what? I think we did well with the amount of vinaigrette that's in here. So let's put this on a plate. To me, any New Year or just regular holiday or like now is this Rosh Hashanah, all the food should show your passion and your love and um, obviously the colors of our beautiful vegetables. So take a look at how everything looks like a jewel once it's put together. Even the cucumbers are gleaming. So good together. And if you don't mind, I'm just gonna pour whatever's left here over the top as the vinaigrette. There we go. Okay, this just needs a little sprinkling of feta over the top. More pomegranates. All right, everybody. We're ready to feast. Come right back for another of my recipes. And remember, all of them are always available on the Sofla Show's webpage. Just scan this quick response code. You'll be whisked off to the Sofla Show's page. It's also on our ingredient list throughout the show. Come right back, because I've got more, and it's sweet. what's cooking on Soap Low Taste right after this. Welcome back to Soap Low Taste where I'm all about Rosh Hashanah today and I've got one more. I'm going to make you this beautiful recipe. It's kind of a combination of a thin crisp with a coconut macaroon. Instead of making tall, very dense coconut macaroons, we've decided to go a little thinner so it's crispy all the way around and coconut right in the center. And the best part is it doesn't have flour. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is whip up egg white. So this is the reason why this muscle is so much bigger than this one, just so you know. So we want them stiff, they're almost there. That's about it. Great, okay, we have peaks, lovely. You should see my whipped cream. All right, here is condensed milk. Here is a ton of shredded coconut. So this is uh, about 60% sweetened shredded coconut to 40% unsweetened larger pieces of coconut. You can find them both at the supermarket. Let's put all that in there. And we're gonna fold in the stiff egg whites to that, as well as some vanilla paste. And a good heavy pinch of salt to balance it out. Because let's face it, that's a lot of sweet stuff. And I'm not going to go too crazy. We are folding in the egg whites at the same time, so we don't want to be too rough with it. And what you'll see is all of a sudden, the coconut starts to kind of disintegrate into the condensed milk and into the egg white. OK. So that is it. So let me show you how this turns out. Now we're gonna cool this, and then you basically just throw it in the oven. But I don't like my macaroons too big. I don't know about you all. So you take about two teaspoons of macaron, and you put that on a sheet pan on parchment paper, and you bake it, and that's about it. So let's see how they bake off. So come right back, and I'll see you in a few. Stay tuned to Soap Low Taste. We'll be right back. So these are how the beautiful macaroons turned out. Like I told you, they're gorgeously thin and crispy, yet they have the coconut in the middle. They're kind of irresistible. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Rosh Hashanah is a wonderful celebration. And with all of my holidays, food plays a starring role. Please give these recipes a try for Rosh Hashanah or any time you get together with your family to celebrate something or nothing. Next week, you've heard of happy hour. Well, next week, since the show is only 30 minutes, join me for a happy half hour. I'll be giving you some fabulous recipes that pair up perfectly with some fabulous cocktails. So here's to you on the next SoFlo Tape. Now let's check in with my friend, our friend, Hunter Frankie, host of SoFlo Health. Good morning, Hunter. What are you doing tomorrow on SoFlo Health? Michelle, those Rosh Hashanah dishes look absolutely amazing. I'm in a yoga studio right now, but tomorrow on SoFlo Health, you can find us helping you take care of your fine jewelry, tasting the delicious cuisine of the South without all of the heavy aspects. It's all tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. on the one and only Local 10, right here for SoFlo Health. <gasps> Thank you, Hunter. We'll be watching tomorrow afternoon at 12.30. So Taste Buzz, thanks for spending another morning with me. I love sharing my recipes and our time. Please be smart, be safe, and be vaccinated, and I'll see you here next week. Goodbye. Happy Rosh Hashanah and very good taste. Shana Tava.